So welcome to Pakuka, last race of the day with uh, only one more day of World Championship action tomorrow. The mass starts tomorrow. Lesser has the first leg for Germany and uh, Ries Piper Doll. It's a strong quartet. Norway with Ligrid, Boer, the two Boer brothers going uh, two and three, which surprised many. And Christiansen on the anchor leg. And then the French, the... Uh, team that took the gold medal in Antolz uh, with uh, Martin Fourcade. Today they race without him. Gigana, Filmaier, Detieu and then uh, Amelia Jacqueline takes the uh, last leg. Jacqueline of course the gold medalist in the pursuit earlier in the championships. Yes, uh, Jacqueline got slightly fresher legs, didn't take part in the single mixed relay, so uh, he will be feeling good uh, as called upon for the final stage to challenge anybody, especially last 500 metres. Provided he's in contention, of course, it could all go horribly wrong. The French dropped off early doors in the women's race earlier, but uh, recovered well. Very impressive uh, second half to the race. So it's no separation be, at the moment. It's going to be busy, isn't it? Some of the teams for the back can have a chance here to move forward, possibly pass, if possible. There we are, teams coming through. I thought they might. You need to fight for your position in the lower part of this climb. Not much room as you go further up the mountain. Yeah, that was about the only opportunity, wasn't it, on the flats behind the stadium. Uh, and then as the, the hill gets steeper, the track gets a little bit narrower. Uh, and you can get past, but it takes an immense amount of effort. And uh, at this stage of the relay, it's very seldom done, and it's not really worth it. It seems like Ligrid and alongside him, Gigana, they've, they've slowed it down now, so it's difficult to get past. So they're, they're maybe just controlling a, a fairly uh, decent pace here, but not full out yet. We're only going to have three lanes spare on the range, 27 teams entered yes uh, Moldova for the first time uh, made up of <laughs> some uh, some uh, Russian athletes uh, but obviously they've crossed over to build this team to give it some uh, yeah some experience initially and just in case you're um, interested in or always follow the medal tables uh, I can tell you that Norway have moved on to five one and three in terms of gold silver and bronze they lead the way by big margin three gold medals ahead of France who have two apiece uh, and uh, have had a pretty good championships but if they could win two of the last three races I think that would uh, be the icing on the cake for them Sweden in third place uh, a good world for, for them again Really, since 2018, the Swedes have done very well. One, two, and two. Uh, and I was wondering, you know, while I was uh, eating my lunch, Mike, whether how much credit Wolfgang Pickler takes for the success of the Swedes uh, now that he's no longer with them. Oh, I think he takes a huge amount of credit. Of course, he was building the team for the Olympics, and then as a sidekick, they got the World Championships in Ostersund, and they really were uh, winning more medals there in Ostersund. They, they showed the strengths at the Olympics. So I think Wolfgang Pickler, in fact, over many, many years, back to the 1990s when he worked with uh, uh, the team there, he really has gelled it again in recent times. A little bit of a gap back to, I think it was the Czechs, uh, very similar to the Norwegian suit, but uh, the Norwegian suit is the one up front, as you can see, Ligridge setting the pace and uh, the French seem to be happy to sit in behind at the moment. Antonin Gigana uh, in that team today. Had a poor season last year, Gigana. Sort of signs of what he can do. Um, his troubles, Mike, do you put it down to overtraining? I think so. You know, you have a, a great season, or he had a great season, and then um, you're, you're fatigued. That was Czech Republic problem there with the, with the steeple. And I think you have an element of um, in putting so much focus into, what, 35 races, you're drained as you go into the next summer and you try again to hit hard. And I think that might have been Giganas undoing. And, uh, but he seems to be getting back up to where he was two, three seasons ago. Well, that light read has really put the punch the pace hard now, and he's got total separation behind him. Uh, obviously, a, a clear plan. 
Yeah, I think with his shooting, he feels that he, on this range in particular, he can afford to push hard uh, and get the reco recovery required before he comes in to shoot. And it won't be long now. That uh, sweeping right turn. And then the woods start to open out. And Ligrid, no doubt, starting to think about his prone shoot. Norway going in lane one. Uh, they've been in the top two of every relay so far this season. They won in Contialati, and then they were second in Hofvilsen, Oberhof, and Antholz. Uh, France won in Oberhof. We had uh, Sweden winning in Hogfilsen and uh, an impressive win by the uh, RBU last time out. Well, the coaches uh, are looking calm, but the athletes won't be, uh, but uh, into automatic uh, reaction. They've done this many, many times in training. France for the team that won here in 2016. They also won here in 2001, which was a world championship year. And uh, they started well. Good shooting from Gigan up. Belarus uh, taking the lead there. Always oh, Gigan in the end. I thought uh, I thought Belarus uh, Labasto. I thought he was going to make it out first, but second place. Sweden uh, having to use all three spare rounds, that's expensive time wasted to hand feed the, the three spares. Yeah, finally they get away, but 22.5 given away by Sweden, a similar story to the women's race earlier, they gave themselves too much to chase. One good race from Gigana and his confidence is back. Is he going to add a gold to the gold that he got two days ago? Welcome back to Perkuka and uh, still quite a long file of athletes at the front of the field in the men's relay. One shoot completed. Uh, France with the first away. Labastu, Ligrid uh, all up there. And um, what did we have? Ten seconds separating the top ten teams after that first shoot. 
Uh, you're not going to win it on shoot number one, but you can certainly make life difficult for yourself. And Finland, Mike, uh, one of three teams on the penalty loop. Yes, that's a, a real shame for Finland. I thought they would do better. Also, Zachna from Estonia normally does so well eh, as the starter, but he's on the penalty loop as well. And 13 out of the 27 nations have uh, hit five out of five. A slightly higher percentage than normal. Normally, we have, what, nine or ten teams that hit five with five in the relay. Yes, it's, it's great light today, isn't it, on the range, although shade coming into the left side of the range, but uh, very limited. Oh, hey, that's a bit of a, a situation, yep. but uh, he managed to balance his way out of it. That was a good good recovery from the, from the Czechs, I think. Just a, a couple of young uh, athletes being put on the on the lead out. Uh, Bionar from Italy. He's only 20. Well, he's 21 year old on Monday, and uh, there was Hart, there is Hartweg as well, 20 year old. Both doing well after the the first shoot. Hartweg only 13 seconds behind. Yeah, Bionar very quick through that first shoot. Came out in uh, fourth position, just uh, three seconds down. Uh, finding it a bit harder to live with the pace now, but uh, good start from the youngster. But Norway back in front, controlling the pace, and uh, I think Ligrid would probably be your world's number one choice for the opening leg of a relay, wouldn't he, Mike? He, he really would, but looking at his at relays, Patrick, strangely, he's missed nine shots this season from 50 fired in relays. That's mixed relays as well, as opposed to his incredible stats, 97% hit rate and 90% hit rate uh, in his individual races. So he takes a little more risk in, in the relay, and it doesn't always pay off. Well, as um, we said in the last race, he spent a lot of time modeling his shooting on Martin Foucault. He spent a season uh, where he couldn't race through to illness and uh, he spent his time well. Again in the relay he just he's just less uh, just less focused somehow maybe it's the three spare rounds you'll get this one I'm quite sure. Yeah, I wonder whether it's the rush to get that first round to go, uh, to go. It's only a second, second and a half. Everyone missing in the leading groups, but Ligrid is the first to clear five. Romania have done remarkably well. Ukraine put themselves into the top positions with a good five with five, as do the Swiss. Good start from them. France and Italy, Mike, are in a spot of bother, as are Austria and the Germans. Three rounds for two targets. Should be able to clear that, but not the sort of start that you expect from the big nations. And no, Austria uh, on the penalty loop. A oh, horrible start. Bionaya again trying to stay with that lead pace. He's only 20 and took a lot of risk there. Gigana struggled, really took a long time to get the final shot away. Yeah, three, three teams on the penalty loop last time round. Austria breaking to the right and uh, it's running at about 24 seconds at the moment. The Americans uh, avoid it but miss a, a lot of targets. There's the first one from Ligrid, high left. High left can't, I mean, he's, he, you look at his position and you have, always have confidence. The rifle throughout is, is just so steady. I think, as you maybe mentioned, he just tried to get that shot away fast, the first shot at, at about 13 seconds. So everything going according to plan for Norway at the moment. Nine seconds lead this time. They were uh, three seconds behind after the first shoot. Warm-up warm -up loop on the right. You can see uh, some of the second leg athletes just getting themselves prepared. Uh, actually, they must be third leg because the second leg athletes already in the exchange box waiting for the first leg to uh, complete, which will only be another couple of minutes. And Ligrid looks uh, to be uh, stepping on the gas now. Oh, he is. And, and, and what a comfort zone that is uh, to hand over with a cushion at the moment, what, 10 seconds. It just takes the pressure off the next athlete because they don't have to chase. As soon as you're chasing, you come in exhausted uh, over your normal limit when you come in to shoot. 
Yeah, lots of the minor nations uh, up there in that chase group. Uh, we've got Ukraine, we've got Belarus, we've got Romania, Switzerland, Belgium are there with Langer. Great start from the Belgian team. I think Mickey Roesch, uh, no doubt, will be watching this. He will have uh, enjoyed their start. Gigan and Mike, 19 behind after the shoot, but he's worked his way through the field and back up into second place. Well, he really has worked hard for that. A lot of traffic to get through. And uh, like, like Reed, uh, just punching as hard as he can now, trying desperate to get another gold medal uh, around his neck. It's been good so far. He's got two. Now, do you see Norway leading from here on in? Or is one of their remaining three going to make uh, a mess of things? Tavia Bo is next. Johannes Tingisberg takes leg three. Uh, and Vetla Schostak Christiansen on leg four. Oh, they're such a hugely experienced team, aren't they? Terry Abu especially, but his, his stand shooting hasn't really filled you with a, a huge amount of confidence, especially at these championships. And, and, and he's only a 77% hit rate throughout the season, so a little concern there maybe for uh, the Norwegian. Yeah, and he's up against Phil Maillet of France on the second leg. Uh, I fancy Phil Maillet to close that down a little. A gap maybe somewhere around 23, 24 seconds by the time this leg is over. That goes down as an excellent start for Norway. Looking to do the double. Having won this morning, Roisland just scraping home. Like three day, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Such strength through the right side, bringing the right foot as far up into the hill as he can. But is this, uh, it looks like Gigana trying to close it down. It was 19, he might have nibbled a couple more seconds. No, not quite. Well, he's limited the damage. Belarus, Switzerland in three and four. Belgium in five. Uh, if only this were the last leg and they were oh, on the verge of a famous top five, that would be great news. But uh, it won't be the case. BNR in six for Italy. Uh, I think the Italians will be happy with the first leg. Hoffer is next, Mike. And Hoffer could get them up into the top three. But uh, the women's relay this morning, Italy led after the first leg. A perfect performance from Lisa Vitozzi. Uh, but then things really went a little awry from there. Unfortunately, it, it did. Vitozzi's time, actually, was even faster than Tyrell Ekhoff's leg time. So uh, Vitozzi really will build, I hope, confidence into tomorrow. And I'm sure she'll get a start with her, what, fifth place in the sprint. Yeah, Lisa Vitozzi is uh, in. She's wearing bib number 25 tomorrow. Unless, of course, yeah. someone withdraws from those who've uh, already qualified. Gigan are looking exhausted. This is the strength when it comes to getting energy out of curves, tight bends, and the downhill, as we saw yesterday in the single mixed relay. <laughs> two five. days ago. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Well, let's see what the time gap is, because uh, Ligrid certainly didn't rest on his laurels. He's been practicing the technique, keep the poles out of the way, sensible move, uh, not really to protect his own pole, but to stop him doing any damage to uh, Talia Bu, who is off for Norway. Next in, uh, France are there. Gigan are handing over to Phil Maillet, and uh, Belarus have done uh, exceptionally well on the first leg. 22 seconds, a uh, huge deficit, France, uh, well, Gigan in the end only miss, uh, losing, what, three seconds, Italy, that's great from the 20-year-old. And 22 seconds relating to at least two spare rounds, so uh, Norway doing a good job. Generally, if the Norwegians only use six spare rounds in the day, Mike, uh, they tend to win. Uh, they've used two already. And Belgium well, is still clean. Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, the Norwegians on their first first leg at the championships last year, and that was uh, Christensen. He was on the penalty loop, and there were 38 seconds of drift, only making it back up into second. So Norway, Belarus, France, Italy, and Switzerland, the top five.
Welcome back to Pekuka. The uh, first leg is completed in the men's relay and all the teams across the line. 27 teams entered in all. Eric Lesser absolutely out after his effort today. Germany uh, coming in down in 20th place, Mike. Uh, 123 behind. Uh, I was thinking we hadn't said much about the Germans and uh, already using three spares, but I, I suspect something else up with uh, Eric Lesser to throw away that much time. Well, that's so strange. Uh, German team remember the World Championships, World Cups here in the past. Uh, we've had issues where uh, uh, the German athlete has run out of steam twice on this track, and I think that's what's happened to Eric today. He was there yeah. with the pace, but very quickly dropped off and just managed to glide across the line, uh, exhausted. Yeah, I think Morgan Stern will be delighted that it's now, <laughs> instead of Morgan Stern's mountain, it, it's going to be Lesser's <laughs> lump, I think. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it is that sort of course, isn't it? If you, uh, if you suddenly go into uh, a state of exhaustion, you lose so much time. And that was the case with Eric. On, on lap one, he was there with the pace of Ligreed. On lap two, he only lost uh, some, what, 12, 15 seconds, so really caught up with him on the, on the final time around this 2.5 kilometre. The Austrians uh, as well are still back there. It's eight or out now, uh, one eleven behind, but that's because of the, the penalty look from David Komatz. And Komatz is an excellent shot. He's just really really try to stay with the pace and uh, came in way over his comfort zone so unlikely for him uh, to place himself on the penalty loop 15 teams within a minute of the leaders norway and japan doing okay at 101 austria at 102 and the austrian order today komatz mike was talking about simonader is on this second leg so you'd expect them to make a bit of ground particularly in the range and then uh, to finish it off for Austria, Leitner and Eberhardt. This is Talia Bo, the overall world champion, the overall World Cup winner from way back in 2011. I think he won a world title that year as well. He did. Uh, it was the individual. Well, not many Norwegians have hit five with five today, Mike, but that could be a very important shoot for Tadir, especially if the others start to miss. Phil Maillet is uh, on the map for France, and he throws his third one wide. Not such a good shoot for the Italians. Lukas Hoffer missing a couple early on, and all this is playing into the hands of the champions from 2019. France, of course, the defending champions. Yes, and Tarja Boe, he just looked so calm, so composed, didn't waste any time and, and just didn't feel the occasion, just kept with his normal feeling and routine. Yeah, surprisingly, Mike, though, uh, a 20-second lead initially, or slightly more than that, 22.7 for Norway, it's still only gone up to 24.3, so I don't think Tarja was uh, pushing all the buttons on that first lap. No, I, that surprised me because uh, they were those chasing. They all used uh, a number one to three spare rounds. I think Slovenia with Fak on now. Uh, it was an okay start of 45 seconds behind Slovenia, working their way up to 39 seconds and fifth place. Kalili from the RBU took the first leg. Matthew Lisiev uh, there now, but uh, they're slowly climb <coughs> climbing up the order. Down in seventh at the moment. What about Canada? Wouldn't it be fabulous if Canada could uh, get a medal as they did in, what, 2016 at the World Championships in this race? And then uh, two of the members, the Gow brothers, were there that day. They're here today as well. Yeah, the only non-European team to claim a medal in the men's relay. They are a good team, and uh, with the Go brothers uh, more experienced now, normally shooting very well, they must uh, see some hope there, a potential, if they shoot to their uh, capacity. Only two spare rounds so far for the Canadians. A little bit of problem with athlete recognition in the group behind. Uh, Italy, Italy, France and Switzerland pretty much wearing identical uh, suits. Uh, Phil Maillet, you may well be aware, aware of his technique. He's left of your screen in the shadows. Hoffer on the right. And then at the back for Switzerland, uh, we have Benny Vega.
still at 24. So no gains by the chase group. Tony Burt holding his own. Next group of uh, athletes containing Ukraine. The only team so far, uh, or the only team still to uh, have hit every target at the first time of asking. That's uh, really impressive. Fact for Slovenia, the host nation, 41.3 behind. And Michael Wonder, you know, desperately unlucky for Pakuka and the Slovenian Biathlon Federation. They've been waiting for this event for many years. They put a huge amount of effort into uh, preparing for it, and, the, and they put a big effort into promoting it in the, at the World Championships last year. But to have a, have a World Champs with no spectators, not only the financial blow, uh, but I wonder how people will remember it. It's, they'll remember without a doubt the, 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 the races have been excellent, the tracks and conditions have been excellent. You mentioned earlier the variation of temperature, somewhat 20 degrees. It's a real pity that uh, 20,000 each day spectators weren't able to be here. And, and it's the first World Championships where that situation has happened, of course. Yeah, and, and this morning's race was excellent. One of the best women's relays we've seen with three teams finishing within, a t within 10 seconds. Uh, but we both commented that the atmosphere just wasn't there. It seemed sort of, uh, there seemed to be a vacuum in the stadium. And, and, and this race, uh, we saw how exciting the women's race was. The men's is a long way to run, but it, it's looking good for Norway. But it, 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 this race always brings tension, excitement, surprises, and, and that's what makes it so exciting. Hoffer is now starting to make ground. He's gained three seconds on Norway. Theo Maier, I think, just controlling himself. He could go with Hoffer, have absolutely no doubt about that, but I think he just wants to keep the pulse rate under control. Benny Vega looks to be struggling in fourth, uh, but he may well recover on the downhill into the stadium. And There's these Pink three teams... Yeah, Pink yeah. the Ukrainians have done well today. Yes, and his wife, Pedrishny, I wonder what they said after the, the women's relay where Pedrishny was caught sleeping. She thought she had second. She backed off with 80 to go and, and was passed in the final home straight. Uh, but they still got bronze. And, of course, the, the World Championships pattern, of course, this one was supposed to go to, to Russia and Chimin. Uh, but, of course, they lost that. That's, uh, and, and I think that Slovenia have done so well at fairly short notice to step in and organise this. Tavia Burr looking very composed at the moment, beautifully balanced on the ski, which is nearly always a, an indication that he's feeling good. Well, Lukas Hoffer has really pressed this one hard, uh, trying to, and he'll shoot fast. There's one thing about Lukas Hoffer, no matter how exhausted he is, he'll build that position fast, he'll release the shots fast. I hope he gets all five. So, fourth shoot of the day. Coming up towards the halfway point of the men's relay. Oh, that was a 10. Now, one okay. miss, Mike, and uh, it's pretty much uh, routine. But when you miss two and you've only got three rounds left, everyone else senses an opportunity. And Hoffer has, but he's gone too fast. He's missed two out of the first five. Pressure. So, Norway, Norway in danger of doing a penalty loop, but so are France and so are Italy. Down it goes. Norwegians breathe a sigh of relief, and the French are on the penalty loop. Mike Feel My A uh, has made their tasks that much harder. Italy and Lukas Hoffer just waiting, 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 and it's not the win. The flags are absolutely still here in the stadium. This is all about world championship pressure, and the Ukrainians can cope with it, and so can the Swiss. Well, when you push that hard on the track, we mentioned Lukas Hoffer, the attack that he was giving. Fio Maier was on his limit, but had to break a little coming into the range. It didn't work. They're on the penalty loop. Oh, what a pity. So France, from being 20 seconds behind, are going to end up at least 40 seconds back on the race leaders. 
It's not over by any means. If you're a fan of the French, uh, Detieu and Jacqueline, they can do some damage in the closing stages, but uh, it's not the scenario that they were hoping for. Tarje, very good in the prone, shaky in the stand. Lukas Hoffer lost his nerve on the fifth shot. He must have been there for 10, 11, 12 seconds before he cleared it. Unusual there for Lukas Hoffer. It seemed like he couldn't eject, couldn't pull the shell, the empty case that was in the chamber. A problem with his extractors, it could not grip hold of the empty shell. Hoffer trying to find a way through, tucks in behind Pudrushny, Benny Vega again pushed to the back of the group, but doesn't matter, Benny's done a good job here today, and Jakob Fak just behind him, so the Slovenians are still there, down in fifth place at the moment, 41 seconds behind going into the range, cut to 25 coming out. Uh, in terms of shooting, Simonada, Mike, 21 seconds. Uh, and uh, Gao, likewise. Norway, on the other hand, 46. So 25 seconds given away on that one shoot. And Pedrushny, 5 out of 5, 22.6 seconds. Morovic uh, doesn't normally shoot that fast. In 23 seconds, fourth fastest. Yeah, it could Germans. all be over if... I was just going to say, that, you know, if, if Norway had gone clear, there'd, there'd be 45 seconds clear. It's incredible, isn't it? Uh, two shots missed out of five. It's expensive, very expensive. And it seemed like Taria just, he waited, he waited, and then a big flinch. The shot missed way low by about four, three, four centimeters. And that's just holding, 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 running out of air, and then panicking and releasing. Probably wasn't sighted at all with it missing that far. Phil Maillet of France, incidentally, is now 46 behind, but the Russians were 40 behind, and they've closed that to uh, 32, so uh, it's not over. But uh, Norway with the world number one, Johannes Tingisburg is next to go, and his job is to give a huge fat cushion to Christiansen, who's on the anchor leg. Uh, and I think Christiansen has probably said a minute and a half will do nicely. <laughs> that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? And uh, Christensen, I thought he might have had more races here, but remember, he was seventh in Antholtz and fourth, seventh in the individual and fourth in the mass start, and he's only been given a race today. But, but you, can't, you can't say that Dali should have missed out or Ligrid for incidents. Uh, who's he, whose place is he going to take? Uh, Tarja Burr? It's just really... Out. Yeah, possibly, but uh, it's such a hard team to get in. But look, look what Tari has done today. If he takes a little bit extra time on the on the shooting range, he'll make up for it on the track. Well, let's see what he's managed to do on the first half of the final lap. He's got uh, another 900 meters to go. And here's baby brother. What a fight between Pedrushny and, and Hoffer. And that's uh, keeping these two teams in the money. Look at the gap. It's only 18 seconds. They've clawed back two seconds on the race leaders. Fack has gone up from five to four. Benny Vega hanging on. Uh, he, lo he looks absolutely exhausted, Benny Vega. <laughs> he really does. He gave everything that second lap. I think it was in the first part of it. Ran out of steam a little. And the RBU, that's okay from Alicia. Yeah, the good news for three spares. Yeah, the good news for Vega, Mike, is he's not racing tomorrow, uh, <laughs> oh. so he can he can put his feet up and just uh, wait for the next round of the World Cup. I really thought Vega would be one of the big names or surprise names here because his his season had been great, but ill health set him back coming in here, and uh, it hasn't gone well until today. So another 25 seconds or so for Talia Byrne. He's uh, working hard for his team and his brother who takes the next leg here. The chasing teams in the background, less than 20 seconds behind. This, is, this race is far from over. And if Norway missed three shots on a single shoot again, they could be in a spot of bother. They've missed five so far. The Ukraine have yet to miss a target, 20 out of 20. If they keep that going, they deserve a medal. And I'm pretty sure that if they, uh, if they don't miss all day, they will take a medal. 
And uh, third leg, it now coming up. Prima is excellent. His form's been good here, shooting good. And Duchenko, the 24-year-old, is, uh, is a decent anchor leg. Look at that, Hoffer, Mike. Ten seconds off Tanya Burr on that last lap. Uh, he put in a, a really, really good shift there. 12.4 uh, the margin. Slovenia at 26 seconds. And... Uh, yeah, I don't think they'll have a problem uh, staying in the race for at least another leg. Slovenia with uh, Rock Tursan next, and then Alex Cesar. Uh, it could all go wrong on the last leg for the host nation. But Jakofak's done well. So one boot to another, and Norway are halfway there, looking to do the double here in Pukuka today. Italy at 18 seconds. Switzerland at 31. First lap for the third leg here in the men's 4 by 7.5 on the penultimate day of action in the Biathlon World Championships in Slovenia. And Norway had a lead to, uh, at the last count of 12.4. I suspect it might have grown to something closer to 20. I think so, although Johannes Tingisbo at the front there, he looked, he looked comfortable, he looked like he's going to get more as the race goes on. Well, that, that has really opened up, it was 12.4, it's now 21.9. And so he's, he's got at least two spare rounds, Mike, probably, you know, another two or three seconds and he's got three spare rounds. Uh, what he's got to do is make sure he doesn't use them. Uh, he must uh, he, he must have been concerned after the single relay two days ago uh, using all his three spare rounds in his second prone. Uh, quite worrying, and he didn't feel particularly confident. He had to take a long time to make sure the, the final shot went down. I hope and I think we'll see a different Johannes Tingisbo on the rifle today. Norway with eight medals at these championships so far. Eight teams now with medals in all. Ukraine joining that list with their bronze medal in the women's relay. And uh, the men hoping to do the same, maybe even do even better. Uh, one notable absentee from the medal list, Mike, the RBU. They haven't had a great time. They, yes, last year, logging off, taking the, the sprint competition. Uh, they were chasing medals. Uh, they were fourth in this one last year. Uh, a little off the pace, 144 behind the winners, but fourth place. Uh, they would love a medal. Anything to do with the fact they're not allowed to race under their national flag? 
I think the spirit, they did contest it, they did, but I think IB are absolutely right to say no, race under your federation flag, uh, and, and other governing bodies have interpreted it differently, but I think IB interpreted it very well from Cass. So here we go. First shoot, third leg, prone position as you can see, and Johannes Tingisburg on lane one for Norway. Ligrid to Tadia Burt to Johannes Burt. And Christiansen liking what he's seen so far. He's the man on the anchor. He'll like it even more if this goes down. Oh, it sounded as though it was. It's funny, when you get a split round here, you get that distinct chink, which in the old days used to be a hit. Oh, he was close, wasn't he? I thought it was going to go down, but um, a slight flinch there, high left. Good work from the... Italians and uh, Giacomo might actually doing a really good job. He might get within 15 seconds again of Norway, Ukraine, their first miss of the day. So that's uh, what 24 hits out of 25. No one's going to sniff at that. Great work from them. And logging off for the RBU up against the Swiss. Switzerland yeah, that was with Jeremy Fanello. Good floor there from logging off. So that's it. Uh, that's looking an awful lot better from. Logging off and Giacomo, he's the second 20 year old in the Italian team, and it's the third leg, they're still in second place. Yeah, Vindish versus Christiansen, it could be on the last leg. We've still got another shoot to come on leg three, but that would be an interesting contest, Mike. Vindish uh, has won World Cups, Christiansen uh, is is a step below the rest of the Norwegian team. Many surprised to see him in the in the quartet instead of Dale. Yes, it was a surprise for many, uh, but they, they like what uh, he produced in Antholt, and, and he secured yeah. that position. <laughs> yeah, with a 23-second shoot. Brilliant. Maybe the Italians getting inspired watching the Prada Cup over in New Zealand. Where Team Ineos are getting a bit of a pasting. Oh dear. Uh, France still uh, there, there about as did you. Uh, 49 seconds, no real gain, no real loss. <laughs> and Germany, Germany way down. 13th last time we saw them. They haven't come through the range as yet. The margin between Germany and the leaders at around 1 minute 50. Actually, Pfeiffer's has cut that to 1.47 but they're a country mile off the pace at the moment. Uh, they made a spectacular comeback in the women's race earlier today. Can they do the same in the men's? It's a tall order. Uh, Pfeiffer will be handing over to Benny Doll. Well, coming in to shoot Pfeiffer, uh, well, he's, he's heading out. No, uh, no, coming in, he's lost 11 seconds to Johannes on that first lap of 2.5. Isn't it strange, Mike? We always see uh, the lesser teams uh, in a good, we always see one or two in a good position going through the third leg, only to fade later on. Now, the Italians putting Vindish last, I think they'll be fairly confident, and Vindish is pretty well rested. Uh, Prima in third. Uh, for Ukraine on the anchor leg today, we have Dudchenko. Uh, how do you think he'll do? Do you know, I looked at that before the race, and I think Dudchenko, he showed his strength, didn't he? In Antholt, where he finished fifth in the individual, so over 20 kilometers, he hit all the targets. He didn't show so well here at 78. <laughs> I was going to say. Only, only three, but I do believe in him when it comes to a relay. Yeah, the standing shoot is the issue, but uh, at least he gets eight rounds to hit five targets. And the pressure, you throw the pressure in there as well, it, it boils up. I think the, the Swiss team are doing an excellent job. Only three spare rounds in fourth place. And Slovenia, that's, that's also fabulous at 48 behind sixth position. At this stage in the race, I think they'll be happy. Norway, the champions from 2019. They've won, what, six of the last nine world titles. Uh, and they've been on the podium in 12 of the last 13. 2017, where was that? Hockfilsen, they had a bit of a nightmare uh, and missed out on that occasion. That was Germany's championships in Hockfilsen. Delmar, of course, their main player, but Benny Doll getting the sprint title. Simon Schemp was still going well. 
Giacomel. He's not lost a lot of time to the fastest skier on the tour. Uh, ten se well, less than 10 seconds given away on this last lap. Prima has lost 11, uh, but then it is to Johannes Tingisburg, and, and Johannes still looks like he's taking it within himself. He'll probably explode on the last lap, as in explode in terms of speed, not burn out. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting to see. It's not really, you know, compared to what he's done in previous championships, Mike, it's been fairly modest from Johannes Tingis. I think it has, and, uh, and it's all to do with the shooting. His ski speed's still there, it's still always there. But uh, you can't afford to miss, for example, two shots in the sprint race, and uh, he finished fifth position. One less, he would have had potential to win it. Are you going to be happy to put a bit of money on Sweden getting up to the top three? They're, they're back in the picture, they're only 106 behind. I think so. When you look at the teams ahead with respect, Switzerland, it may not go so well uh, from here on in, and... Uh, the, the RBU team as well, although Lachipov is a, is a good anchor man, so I think there's teams ahead that are slightly weaker, and Sweden could come back into this. Yeah, Sweden could be looking for their sixth medal of the championships. Norway, three shoots remaining. Their margin back to close to 20 seconds. Giacomo just inside that. Prima of uh, Ukraine back at 28 at the moment. No wind influence whatsoever. It's as calm as it can ever can be for shooting. That's how to do it. That is how to do it. Excellent shooting from Johannes. It wasn't out of control, but he didn't hang around. He didn't take too much care. And uh, Gia Comel, uh, I think, just uh, slightly uh, put off by the fact that the Norwegian rattled them down that easy. He's exhausted, Patrick, and Gia Comel has tried to stick to that fast routine, and it's, uh, it's just such a waste. Now he's on the yeah. penalty loop. Yeah, Vindish, oh, the whole... Uh, all the hearts in the Italian camp sinking at the moment, but Ukraine go through. Ukraine remain the best shooting team. Just one miss so far out of the 30 targets down. RBU now with a chance of moving back into the medals because Italy still struggling on the range. The Swiss uh, having a same sort of uh, story with Jeremy Finello. Who, and this uh, is where... Yeah, sorry, this is where Sweden now have a real chance. The weaker athletes struggling. I thought they might at this stage, when you push so hard, you, you're not going to keep that rifle steady on the range. Martin Ponsolomo on course for Sweden. Uh, the, he's already got himself a gold medal. And Ponsolomo just missing one. He shot very quickly. France are back in it as well. And that's uh, Simon Dettieu who's done a good job. And Emilia Jacquelin will be uh, overjoyed to see the fact that he's going to be setting off uh, within, uh, what, 40 seconds of second place. So a great battle between Sweden and Finland. Samuelsson on the course uh, last for Sweden. And he's no slouch. I think a Jacquelin-Samuelsson battle would be very interesting. I'm delighted for Johannes Tingisburg. That, that is so secured. So many of those shots, three of them, would put the prone target down. That's it. That's real good story for his confidence. And only 23.4 seconds. So the gap at the front now. 31 seconds, and Artem Prima it is, who's trying to keep pace with uh, the world number one, Johannes Tingis, through 20.8. I think uh, we'll see that extend when Prima comes through. It was 31. I think at this point we'll see Prima, what, uh, 36 seconds behind, and then it's going to extend by more when uh, Johannes Tingis Bo comes into the finish. Or oh, the handover. He's yeah, exhausted. Yeah. 
Yeah, Johannes Dingis with all the information that he needs. Uh, 31 at the range, 38 now, so Prima's losing a bit of time. Logging off for the RBU, was in third place. He's still in third place, uh, and it looks as though Gia Camel is uh, closing down on him, actually. The Italian, having done a penalty loop, still only 54 behind, and still with a chance of getting a medal, because Vindish is no slouch, but Sweden and Ponsolomo are starting to make a move. They are, um, and if you've been on the penalty loop, you've got that 150 metres extra in your legs, the frustration of having uh, missed some targets. Now, Sweden were 115, they're still at 115, so no gain on the leader, but because Prima has lost over 10 seconds, they are getting closer and closer to the medals. Uh, I hesitate to say that the gold is going to Norway because something can always go wrong. And actually, Mike, we're getting to the stage where uh, Christiansen on the last leg now has quite a lot of expectation on his shoulders. He's going to get a cushion of some 35 seconds. And uh, the bigger that gap, the more they're expected to win and the more nervous it makes you. Oh, and we've seen spectacular collapses, if you like, in the history of the relay. But hopefully, uh, and Christiansen is normally a very safe bet on the anchor leg or on any leg in the relay but he hasn't raced here yet and that worries me he's been training for this relay uh, he knows that so he's got it in his mind but he hasn't really felt the pain at, at race pace with a world championship bib on yet at these champs yeah. yeah and I think Norway will still be concerned by Sweden and France in particular uh, Samuelsson and Jacqueline can easily take 30 seconds out of Christiansen. So we're, we're set for a really exciting occasion. Uh, and actually, I wonder whether Norway are now thinking, oh, we should have put Johannes on the last leg. <laughs> well, look at the damage he's doing here. That's nearly 15 seconds gained on Prima, and Prima is giving absolutely everything. Uh, there won't be many staying anywhere near Johannes Tingis Burr's pace. Latyapov at 58. Uh, so Christiansen will have a, what, 300, maybe 350 metre lead over Latipov on that last leg. Here he is. Oh, the that, pressure is... A, <laughs> I know, he looks a bag of nerves. Oh. Usually pretty good, but as, as I mentioned this morning, Mike, he's only got a 68% hit rate in the stand in the relays over the last two seasons. Oh, that's a little scary, uh, but I think, and I do believe, what we saw in Antholtz two, three weeks ago, he looked good, he was skiing fast, he was hitting so many targets. Uh, hopefully, he can uh, just do it as normal and not feel the pressure. So Norway led at the first leg, the second, and the third exchange as well. They have one more to go, 7,500 7, metres between themselves and the finish line, but a small matter of 10 targets to hit as well. Christiansen, a reputation for being a good shot, but can he do it when it really matters, and particularly in the stand position? I just get the feeling there's another twist to come. The smiles there from the coaches, uh, Patrick uh, Oberegger, uh, delighted. And uh, they're delighted to see that Johannes Tingis is what looked oh, back to normal there in the range. Prima, exhausted, nearly fell with 200 metres to go. And Prima coming out of the range was at 31 seconds. So losing a fair chunk of time, 20 seconds given away. That's uh, almost 200 metres given away to Johannes Tungisbo on that last uh, two and a half K loop. So good work from the Norwegians. And the RBU with Loginoff handing over to Latyapov. Medals possible. They have not got one so far. Loginoff only losing seven seconds. That's good skiing. Seven seconds to Johannes Tungisbo. Vindish, Samuelsson and Jacqueline set off together in pursuit of the medals. One of those three teams uh, surely is going to get a medal, possibly two. I don't think three are going to manage it, but two is a distinct possibility. Two teams lapped already. 
It's unfortunate. Just looking at the lap times there for leg three, Patrick. So Johannes Ting is both 17 minutes, 37, 28 seconds ahead of the next, which was Loganov, and Tichu 29 seconds behind Ponsoloma, 30. So a huge gap there over 7.5 kilometers from Johannes. That will give him confidence before the mass start tomorrow. And here comes uh, Latipov. Yes, tomorrow they race twice the distance, 15 kilometer at the end of a very busy, what, 12, 13 days. Yeah, an opportunity for someone who's been rested, but generally, if you've been rested, you don't get, uh, you don't get a start. Christiansen's in a pretty good position, Mike, for the mass start. Uh, hasn't raced until today, but today will be a sharpener for the 15K tomorrow. Yes, and uh, some were concerned that he might drop out of the top 15, therefore he wouldn't start at World Championships. He needs to be top 15 for a definite start, and then it's on your results here, but thankfully he did hold on to uh, 15th place in World Cup rankings. Yeah, just behind Simonada and Benny Dole. Benny Dole, I think Benny Dole is going to go dynamic on this track. He needs to. There's still 2.21 behind the German team in their 10th place. Great shooting, though. They've only missed three targets, three spare rounds. Germany with only three medals at these championships so far. It has not been a good season for them. I wonder how much they offered Delmar to come back. <laughs> She'd still be great. Uh, of course, she's into yeah. a distant racing now, isn't she? Running, that is. So, Christiansen through 24.1. And uh, again, getting all the information. It'd be nice to be in the team meeting. Uh, Mike, do you think the, the athletes get to say what they want to hear and uh, if you don't want any information do you, do you state that oh definitely i mean it can be so irritating but for the first time johannes ting has never complains or uh, brings a negative to the table unless it's really required but he, he was disappointed about the information he didn't get uh, in the first race the second race the sprint competition he thought he was doing better than he actually was in terms of his time and in relation to others so something happened yeah. on that day yeah, um, I think it was probably to do with Jacqueline's time, who was started behind him and uh, finished ahead of him in terms of time. So Jacqueline taking the bronze, Johannes Ting is down in fifth place. But there wasn't much in it. Well, this is looking so controlled, isn't it? From uh, Christensen, his first, first day uh, racing at the World Championships, but so composed and very, very smooth and efficient. He's shot pretty well in the relays that he's done so far. He hasn't missed a prone target in a relay so far this season. But then again, he's only done two. But uh, still, it's, it's probably a good indication that they don't need to fret too much, particularly with the, condi the conditions that we've got here in Pakuka. So in they come. Uh, only difference between now and the start of the race is that the sun has gone, and that will affect the sights. Did you see uh, Christensen wiping his eyes there? The sweat is very warm. The sweat through the hat is in his eyes. He got rid of that. Hopefully it's not going to affect his, uh, his vision. Does a double check to see the flags are as still as they are. Nice nine ring. Little left, that will uh, make Ziggy Maze a little shaky. He'll be holding his breath for this one, but down he goes. Five with five, and he's halfway there. He is halfway there. Now he's just got to decide what pace does he attack the penultimate loop. Does he save wow. something for a sprint? Should it come to that? Or does he try and extend his lead to something close to 30, 45 seconds? Well, I think he has to um, hold within a little coming into his second shoot, the stand shooting. And, and just looking further back, uh, uh, Jacqueline has only pulled one second back from Christensen. I thought uh, Jacqueline would be attacking on this first lap. RBU versus Ukraine. A little bit of a nudge match going on here. And it's... Uh, Latipov, first to strike. 
and he's got the psychological advantage as target four goes down. RBU going into silver medal position. And then the chasers. Sweden, we've got France, we've got Italy, and we still have uh, Slovenia going really well. Dechenko affected by those three teams alongside him. Now four teams coming in. It's rapid fire. It's all about gambling at this stage, and it pays off. Sweden, Italy, France, down the five, and they move up into the medal positions. Uh, the RBU certainly aren't safe in second, Mike. I think there could be some pressure there, but uh, that was some excellent shooting. Jacqueline and Samuelson in particular just threw caution to the wind. Lachipov, that left elbow, very similar to Loganov, getting the left elbow way under the barrel and locking tight. Jacqueline shooting in 24.9, Samuelson at 26.2, Latyapov at 25.4, Norway uh, Christiansen a slightly more sedate 27.1, but still very respectable. Yes, Slovenia just losing positions there with the spear rounds from Sisha. Uh, they're still down seventh place. Well, we've got a 54 second lead for the race leaders, Norway. But between positions three and six, we just have two seconds. And here they are. This is the battle at the moment for the bronze medal. It could well turn into the battle for the gold because Latyapov uh, is what? He's 20 seconds ahead, 23 seconds ahead, Latyapov. It's not a huge amount. Two missed targets on his last shoot and he could be in trouble. It's rare that we see such a, a huge gap at this stage, uh, close to a minute, four seconds off a minute from team two to team one. And last year, what it was, uh, 21 seconds from gold to silver last year at the World Championships. The RBU taking the bronze medal in Antolz earlier on. Vindish just going wide there ahead of Jacqueline. Uh, I'm a little surprised at that. I thought Jacqueline would be... Uh, punching the pace harder than he than he is he's not wanting to lead the snow um, local time what just coming up five past four it's not changing the temperatures are still warm you can see the snow even in the shade it's still splashing up it's it's still quite wet Clear. I like the clear instructions there, not uh, shouting go faster, not going crazy, just giving very clear, precise information on those behind. We have certainly seen a lead of a minute evaporate on the last shoot before. Hochfilsen. I can remember Hochfilsen with Germany, Sven Fischer I think it was on the last leg, Austria coming through to take the win. Can you think of any more? I'm just thinking, yeah, sadly for uh, for the Norwegians and Svensson into the range, first position for the final stand, and he finished in fourth place. That must have been Sochi. That was Sochi. Still at around 56 seconds, so Christensen holding his own. Just wondering whether this is going to turn into a tactical race, Mike, or whether they will still be chasing that silver medal. They were at 117. I think they're, they're still all hoping and believing. I think they're pressing as hard as they can, led by Vindish, but I think they're just hoping that the silver medal might show itself if Lechipov uh, has some problems. I think he needs two, three spare rounds for any one of these uh, four chasing to get a chance of that silver.
Yeah, the pressure is on Latipov, but he's uh, he's given himself an extra two seconds advantage. Christiansen has gone into Sunday stroll mode a day early, and uh, he comes down for the final shoot of the relay. He knows five with five is enough. He knows that with a minute, as long as he avoids the penalty loop, the gold medal is going his way. Latipov is not quick enough to take more than 10, possibly 15 seconds off him on the last loop. So the Norwegians holding their breath. And uh, again, Christensen taking the sweat out of his eyes. Good clear vision again, hopefully. I think they've all been told to smile before they come in for the standing <laughs> shoot, Mike. If you smile, you feel good. You do good. First one's down. And two. Is he going to finish in style? It looks like it. Three out of three. He throws four wide and Ooh. five. So that will get the nerves jingling. Got mine going. Dead center two shots, almost. One target. The nerves are kicking in now. You can see the movement in the barrel. Reflexes are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant under the toughest of circumstances. Here are the three teammates, and they celebrate yet another gold. Most of They're Norway's very, golds coming in the relays. They were very composed as <laughs> teammates. I thought they'd be leaping in the air at uh, second uh, spare round being used and putting it down. Yeah, I'd like a reading on pulse rates and blood pressure on the coaches uh, during the final shoot of a relay. This is for the RBU for their first medal of these championships. One more miss, and Latipov is going to be a bag of nerves. Good recovery. Very good recovery. The battle for the bronze is immense. France miss. Jacqueline making a mistake. Samuelsson of Sweden gets the first three down. And number four. Is it going to be another medal for Sweden? It could well be. Ukraine might be in on it as well. No, they throw the last one wide. And you don't give Samuelsson a 10-second lead. He will fancy a crack at the silver medal. He definitely will. Look at the gap. It's nothing. In his mind, it will be nothing. He'll get straight onto Latipov's tail very quickly, I'm it, quite sure. He, he's just dropped something off the back of his rifle, Mike. I'm not sure whether that was a magazine that fell out. Um, I, I didn't know it was in his glasses or something. Something fell out. Now, that will be interesting. What's the he's ruling there? Yes, he's cleared. There's a red line pre-range and red line post-range. You can't leave anything in that zone. I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be safe. Maybe it was the glasses. A look over the shoulder from Samuelson, and uh, he will soon find out that he's got 12 seconds to spare over Ukraine. Jacqueline is a further five seconds back, so no real danger at the moment, but Jacqueline is quick. We've seen what he can do, but I just wonder, uh, he's the sort of athlete that needs the scent, Mike, and when he's got the scent of another athlete, he never lets it go. Oh, he's a fighter. Uh, they ran very similar paces on the previous lap, just two seconds. Latipov advantage over Samuelson. Samuelson deciding to go early. Is that the, the wise decision? Probably. Well, I think Christiansen needs to be aware that Samuelson has made a move. Uh, he didn't quite get a glimpse of Samuelson, but he's about to come around that corner at the bottom of the climb. Uh, and it, it's not just about time here. It's telling it's telling Christensen who is chasing because Samuelson is not just going for silver. I think he he's going to try and give the Norwegians a scare here. Well, he's a brave man, and, and he's done so much damage to Latipov's spirit that Latipov has, has nothing left. It appears that way. So great tactics there, Jean-Marc Chablot. Delighted that uh, Samuelson got five out of five rapid fire. Yeah, and uh, Latipov is now in danger of being caught by Jacqueline, who is behind. And uh, this is as close as Russia have got to a medal so far, or the RBU, as I should say. And Jacqueline senses it is a possibility after the uh, disappointment of the French women this morning. So, Christiansen leads for Norway. 42 seconds is still a healthy gap, but when he came out of the get range, he had 52 seconds advantage over the Swede. Jacqueline at the top of that climb he only has 50 I'd say only 15 seconds to find and you know what in Jacqueline's mind that's what he'll be thinking I can close that and maybe I can actually get that bronze medal well the applause as opposed to the urgency uh, I, I, 
you know, I think they're safe. It, it would be extraordinary if uh, Samuelson managed to close it. But you just don't want to be complacent at this level. Well, that, that was such a gutsy move from Samuelson. To go early can have danger. Lachipov, I don't know what happened there. They, they, as I said, there were only two seconds separating their times on the second lap, the middle lap, but uh, Samuelson has completely lifted his game. And Samuelson, <laughs> huge risk there. Uh, clearly, he wasn't exhausted coming into the range. It was only 19 seconds uh, stop start to get all five targets. Yeah, the Swedes have shared the medals out. Ponsolomo, of course, getting uh, a gold. Samuelson has had some individual success. Yeah, well, Samuelson, the two bronze and the silver, incredible. The, the single relay with third and the first mixed relay with third. And, of course, that great performance uh, in the pursuit, uh, hitting all 20. And Latipov at 52 last time we saw him. Uh, Christensen's into cruise mode. He is into cruise mode. The celebrations have started. It's just, just enough to make you a little bit nervous because Samuelson will not let up. He needs to concentrate. We've seen this in the past if an athlete just plays a little too cocky. You never know. And I'm sure, but it's safe. The track isn't difficult from here on in. It's a safe, it's a safe journey into the line. I wonder what uh, Ladipov might now has just 11 seconds. I think he's done the bulk of the hard work. So I think the RBU will survive, get their first medal of these championships. Norway get their ninth medal. It's their sixth gold. And there are still two races remaining. So it's looking better and better for the Norwegians, thanks to a double gold day on this Saturday. They won the women's relay this morning in style. They've been even better in the men's relay. And they have pretty much led from start to finish absolutely excellent started off by Ligrid Tadja Bo, Johannes Tingis Bo um, Vettelshaw Stad Christiansen uh, maybe they've established a new order in the men's relay that was a master class from the Norwegian team no doubt I thought Johannes Tingis Bo was uh, really back to where he where he has been the last few years and the Olympic champions settle and celebrate the silver medal Femling, Nellin, Ponsoloma, Samuelsson the two strong men on their legs, three and four for Sweden, which is something they haven't always done. It has really paid off today. And uh, well done to the RBU. We need all the big nations getting medals at some stage. They're the ninth team to claim one. It's a bronze in the men's relay. Maybe that will inspire them to something special tomorrow in the two mass starts. And nothing Jacqueline could do. He started that last lap with, uh, what, a deficit of uh, 107 on the lead. Leaders, but he had 15 seconds to make up on the RBU, just didn't have enough juice in the tank. And Ukraine, no, well, who got a medal yeah. this morning, have to settle for five. Great shooting from uh, the Ukraine team, only four extra shots. And, and, and I'm pleased, delighted for the RBU. They need uh, some joy, they need some success. And Lachipov gave <laughs> everything. I think his middle lap was so aggressive, they nearly tripped him up in the stand shoot. Benny Dole just uh, pushing the, the host nation back down into eighth place. Germany, the, the best shooting score, equal with uh, Ukraine, just four missed targets. It all went wrong when Eric Lesser ran out of uh, puff. I, I, did he go hyperglycemic? Not quite sure. No doubt we will hear about that tonight. wearing number one they are number one yet again they get the title back that they won in 2019 and uh, Norway's quartet looking very very strong indeed how important is that good start Mike oh it, it takes pressure off as soon as you start chasing 20 seconds 30 seconds you're putting all your athletes it's a ripple effect under extreme pressure they have to take a lot of risk when you've got that comfort zone which like we gave and led one it takes some of that excessive push away. It, it leaves the athlete in control of their own race, uh, much more so. And Dave, what an outing for Lightweight's first world championships. Uh, what's that now, three gold? Uh, 
it's not a bad world championship first time round. <laughs> and it's his birthday today. It's a happy for yeah. 24th birthday as well. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of living up to, isn't it? Uh, the, the, they'll be celebrating in, in Yilo in any way they possibly can in these times. And think rate still over 90% in both prone and stand. Uh, but Chris 